evening, Dr. Naik. My question to you this evening is, with all due respect to Islam, you said that idol worship is the greatest sin in Islam and Allah does not forgive an idol worshipper for this. But what about people who have been born into families of religions other than Islam? For example, in India, most of the population is Hindu and lifelong they may not have had exposure to Islam or somebody else who may have educated them about that. What is the fault of those people? Will they never reach paradise? Will Allah never let these people enter paradise? What is their fault if they believe what is being taught to them since the day they were born? Does Allah not have mercy on them? Thank you. Sisters asked a very good question, a very logical question. What about those human beings who are born in non-Muslim families and the parents are doing idol worship? So who's to blame? How can Allah punish them? And that's a very good question. That is the reason a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that every child is born in Deen al-Fitr. Every child is born as a Muslim. Irrespective of whether he's born in a Jewish family or a Christian family or a Hindu family or a Muslim family, he is born as a Muslim. Muslim, as I told earlier, by definition means a person who submits his will to Almighty God. So every child when he's born, he submits his will to Almighty God. Later on, he's influenced by his elders, by his parents, by his teachers. Then he may start doing idol worship, he may start doing fire worship, and he may go to the wrong path. That's the reason whenever a non-Muslim accepts Islam, the more appropriate word is revert. It's not convert. Convert means going from one faith to another faith. Revert means a person was on the right faith, went to a wrong faith and came back to the right faith. So the more appropriate word, sister, is revert. Now coming to your question, how can Allah hold responsible a person if he's born in a non-Muslim family? That is the reason if a child is born in a non-Muslim family, before he gains maturity, if he dies, he will go to Jannah, inshallah. Why? Every child submits a will to Almighty God. He's a Muslim. He may have a... Hindu name or a Christian name, John, Ramu, it doesn't make a difference. But as long as he's a child, and if he dies as a child sister, that child will go to Jannah, irrespective of whether he's born in a Muslim family or non-Muslim family. Later on, when a child grows up and he becomes an adult, then it is his responsibility what he does. That's the reason if a child commits a crime, the court is lenient. When he becomes an adult, then he cannot say that my father taught me to rob, therefore I'm robbing. If a child grows up at the age of 22 and if the police catches him after robbing, he cannot say that my father taught me to rob, therefore I'm robbing. Will the judge let him go? If he's a child at the age of five, the judge may say, fine, he's a child, he hasn't attained maturity. But once he becomes an adult, and then if that adult tells the judge that I'm robbing because my father taught me to rob, he will not be excused. Everyone responsible for his or her own deed. Now once a person becomes an adult, it's the duty of that adult to find the truth. It's the duty of us Muslims to convey the message to the non-Muslim. But irrespective whether a person gets the message or not. If a human being is that free, there were two tribes which did not come in contact with modern civilization till as late as 1950. One tribe was the Kapauku tribe and the second was the Astrolian Aborigines. These two tribes did not come in contact with modern civilization till as late as 1950. And when researchers went and tried to find out what was the way of life, it was nothing but Islam. But they didn't call themselves Muslims. They believed in one God. They believed that God had got no images. He had no idols. They prostrated when they worshipped God. It was everything of Islam but in name. So if a child is not given any external influence, he submits his will to Almighty God and remains on that path. Now, once a person becomes an adult, it's the duty of us Muslims to convey the message of Islam. If we do not convey, Allah will hold us responsible. He'll hold us responsible. But, irrespective whether we do the job or not, we'll be responsible. But, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 53, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi that soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. Allah has taken upon himself that he will directly convey this message to every human being himself. So if a Muslim does his job or not, whether we are good examples or bad examples, Allah will directly put in the heart of every human being whether Muslim or non-Muslim, 
about the truth about one God. So once the message comes, that human being may follow, may not follow. He may not follow thinking that if I accept Islam, I may have to give up the things which I like, I may have to give up my alcoholism, I may have to give up dating and dancing and, you know, whatever thing which is haram in Islam. He may not accept the message, then he's responsible. Similarly, if the father teaches him something wrong, to rob, it's his duty to realize that robbing is haram. It's a sin. It's the thing which is wrong. He cannot go and tell the judge that because my father taught, therefore I'm robbing. Similarly, here when Allah directly puts the message into the heart of every human being about the haq, about the oneness of God, and the idol worship is prohibited, yet if the individual continues, he or she is responsible. So on the day of judgment, therefore Allah says that no non-Muslim will ever object to the justice of Allah. Because your organs will give witness about you. Your eyes, your hands will speak about you. So on the day of judgment, even those people will be put in hell, they will never object to the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What they will say, please give us one more chance and Allah will say it's too late. There are many chances given in this world, but you live only once in this world. So on the day of judgment, no non-Muslim, no human being, even if he's put in hell, will ever object to the justice of Allah. He'll only say that, please forgive me and it will be too late. Whatever is there in this world, this world, as Allah says in Surah Mul, chapter 6 and verse number 2, is a test for the hereafter. Hope that answers the question, sister.